Okay, welcome back my fellow machine learners. Uh, I'm Bevan and if you've been following the last few videos uh, you saw that we were just discussing parameters and hyperparameters and the importance of hyperparameters, um, the difference between training parameters and and obtaining the optimal hyperparameters. Okay, now the question I'd like to answer in this video is this. After we have selected our hyperparameters, our optimal hyperparameters, what do we do now? What do we do now? Right, so you go through the whole process of cross-validation and you 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 set up a hyperparameter grid, etc, etc. Then what do you do? Okay, so this I'm going to do a quick recap of how to find the hyperparameters and then I want to answer this question. What do we do now? And so I'd like to refer you to one of the most amazing textbooks called An Introduction to Statistical Learning by James Whitton Hasty and Tip Shirani. And um, out of this textbook, there's the section 6.2.3 called Selecting the Tuning Parameter or the Tuning Hyperparameter. Okay, and the example that they use is from Lasso. Okay, if you recall from the previous videos, or perhaps you've, you've heard about this already, lasso is essentially a regularization technique um, that has a specific hyperparameter called the lambda value. Okay, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but just know that, it, that it's a hyperparameter. Okay, all right, so sorry if you hear those hadidas in the background. They really are a nuisance. Okay, so let's read what this textbook says. Uh, and we'll follow the steps here, and then we'll finally answer this question of what do we do now? Number one, so how do we select a tuning hyperparameter? We choose a grid of lambda values, okay? So this is in my own words, create a grid of hyperparameter values. So in this case, it'll be, it's a single value. So you're going to have lambda equals a range of values from, from a minimum to a maximum, okay? You'll just have a single list of lambda values. But for example, if you're doing a neural net, a neural net, you're going to have uh, an activation function hyperparameter, and you're going to and you're going to put in say three or four different activation functions, or you'll have a learning rate, right? And then you're going to have a a range of learning rates, and then you could have number of uh, layers, right? And then you could have a list there, for example, as well, a number of different values. So, so you create your hyperparameter grid, okay? And then the second step is compute the cross-validation error for each value of your hyperparameter. In my own words, compute this, the cross-validation error for each combination of hyperparameter values. Although I have to I've, I'm making a, a follow-up video that we can't always do calculate the cross-validation error for each combination. Each combination is called grid search. But actually, I'll show you from spe specifically from a, a paper that random search is often preferred to an exhaustive grid search. Nevertheless, the point is, for each combination that you select, Calculate a cross-validation error, and then select the hyperparameters that give you the smallest cross-validation error, okay? We then select the tuning parameter value for which the cross-validation error is smallest. Great. I think we've, we're, we're up to speed here. I think you've, if you've been following the videos, you know this by now. Now, what do you do once you've found that optimal hyperparameter? What do you do? This is what you do. Finally, the model, right? The model, which could be a neural net, a lasso, random forest, support vector machine, doesn't matter what, because all the models have hyperparameters. The model is now refit using, note there, all of the available observations. All of them. Okay? So if you've been watching the videos from the beginning, you notice that I, I was talking about train test split, 
um, five-fold cross-validation, ten-fold cross-validation, where you would take a portion of the data, train on that, test or validate on, a, on an unseen portion, and you could do that multiple times in various ways. But, but now that you've got your hyperparameter, you, you, don't, you don't do that anymore. You take the entire data set and you take that specific grid or, or, or combination of hyperparameters, you apply those, those tuning parameters to the model, and then based on those tuning parameters, you let it train or fit the entire data set. Okay? The entire data set. And now you will have your final model, right? That's trained on the entire data set, entire data set, with your optimal hyperparameters. Great. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And um, it's very similar also when you're carrying out cross-validation, by the way. Okay. Anyway, guys, if you're finding uh, these videos to be helpful, if you are enjoying them, please uh, leave a comment, leave a question, like it, subscribe. Let me know how you feel. All right. I'll see you in the next one.